Hello, everybody. Hello. We've reached some turbulence here, apparently. Nope. Nope. Okay. No. Hello, everybody. Hello. My name is Paul. Welcome, one and all. We have reached our cruising altitude. Pretty fast takeoff, wasn't it? Of 500 feet. Hmm. Passengers in our rear smoking compartment may smoke them if you got them. Interesting. Back when there were smoking compartments on planes. We hope you enjoy our flight. Our ETA is approximately 10 minutes. Your lovely stewardess will be serving drinks shortly. This is because we couldn't hire any taller stewardesses. The man sitting next to you in the responds in the captain's lame quip with a hearty har har har. He's a pirate, I guess. Did I even get my intro off? It's like, hello, my name. Good. Uh, whatever. I can't even remember what it is there. My name is Paul. Welcome one and all. This is back to Legion Suit Larry 2. We're on the plane to God knows where. I am upgraded to a novice with a score of 300 out of 500. I don't even know what's going on. Hey, says the man behind you. Now I remember you. You were that guy from Lefty's Bar. <coughs> oh, he's not a pirate. Hey, says the man beside, sitting beside you in his too loud voice. I remember you. You're that guy from Lefty's Bar. I haven't seen you in a long time. Let me tell you this new joke I heard. Oh, God. No way. No jokes. All you ever told me was punchlines. Well, good. We've met an old friend. Yeah, he seems to be fairly benign. Well, let's uh, look around. There's not even a magazine to read in the seat back pocket in front of you. Nothing but a slightly crumpled air sick bag. Well, we know we got to get that. You slowly slip your hand inside this slightly sticky seat back pocket and slide out the semi soiled air sick bag. If you didn't need it before, you need it now. Yay, we got a point for that. Beautiful. So, uh, what you up to there, Kenny? You'd rather not. Besides, the only person he wants to hear is himself. Uh, all right, let's stand up. Okay. Drinks, drinks, anyone? Drinks? Uh, oh, of course. No, no. Ladies, ladies, please. Let me, oh, thank you. That drink? No, uh, all right. Well, fine. I'm confined to my seat for the duration. And I never do get a drink, because as soon as I sit down, there they go. Oh, hold on. Once again, the board attempts to strike up a conversation. Say, I don't believe we've ever met. My name's Ken. What's yours? My name is Larry. Huh. Larry, Larry Laffer. Well, Larry, what kind of work are you in? I'm not. I'm recently incredibly rich. Oh. Well, that's one way to stifle him, Larry. Well, it said there were no magazines, so I guess I'll read that pamphlet I bought. Repent and send money. That's all that's in it. All right. Uh, maybe if I give it to this guy, he'll leave me alone. Instantly intrigued by the fascinating treatise, Ken finally leaves you alone. The question is, have those stewardesses finally finished serving drinks? Oh, good, good, good. Okay, so that's what I need to do to get the drinks carts out of the way. Is it true? It is. All right, let's explore a little bit. All right, hey, first class. First class is certainly more comfortable than cattle class. The door to the cockpit is at the front of the airplane. I, I figured that's where it would be. It's a good spot for it. I assume we'll keep it there. What's behind these curtains? Uh, nothing behind the curtain that I need. All right. Can I look in the cockpit? Can I get a pair of those little wings? I'm in a really good junior pilot. Okay. This is going to be bad. Caramba! It's one of those wacky foreign terrorists. Grab the fire axe. Got him, El Capitan. Oh, boy. I bet that shaking is pretty much me getting my uh, head split by an axe handle. What a waste, Larry, to come so far and then try to hijack an airliner. <laughs> How about locking the door? That's one of these modern new security things that I think I can actually get behind. All right. So that failing, let's go see what's happening in the rear of the plane. See if I can get myself killed back there. Uh, uh Oh, God. This must be the smoking section. The smell of stale cigarette smoke makes you fondly recall your days as a lounge lizard. Available at your local software dealer as Leisure Suit Larry in the land of the lounge lizards. Pick up a couple of copies today. Just in case you need a spare. Uh, oh, there are three doors here. Two are labeled restroom. One is labeled danger emergency exit. All right, well, let's see what's in the bathrooms. Uh, some gal's been in that one for hours. Is there one down here that I can't see? Where's the third door? Well, I guess that's the third door over there. All right. Well, they gave me this parachute and there's an emergency exit, which makes me think there's probably something really bad going to happen to this flight. I guess we have to wait and find out. Everything seems fairly legit as long as I don't go in the cockpit. Okay. Well, can I root around in people's luggage? Open bag. Uh, no, well, I can, but I don't see anything. Do you mind me looking in your bag, sir? 
No. Wow, these people are really trusting. And is this lady... It looks like she has a baby on her lap and is either smacking it or pulling its hair out or she's knitting. Can't really tell. And I think this lady has her arm up on the armrest, but it really looks like she's just slouching with really bad posture with one of her legs way up on the armrest. That's just sloppy. Does this flight actually end? Do I die if I stay here long enough? Or do I just have to escape it by jumping out of the airlock or whatever? Mm, whatever. Let's let's wait it out. Uh, the airline's PA system crackles to life. Ladies and gentlemen, we are approaching our destination. Please return to your seat, fashion your seatbelt, and return your tray table to its upright and fully locked position. Thank you. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, raise seat back. The hell you say? Nothing I can do about that now. All right. Well, I guess I'll see you on the ground, one way or another. The airplane's PA system again crackles to life. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are starting our final descent at this time. Okay, we've landed. Take our word for it. That was even faster than takeoff. So on behalf of the entire crew, flight number one, we'd like to welcome you to Kalwa, where the local time is up. Please remain in your seats. We have some members of the local police force coming aboard to check your contraband. Oh, and by that you mean KGB. Something makes you think that these two are no local police. There must be some way you could escape from this airplane before it lands. Ah, right, let me cut to again, monkey breath. Hang on, Larry, here we go again. All right. So I can't land. I have to escape. So now I know what I need to do. All right. I've put on my parachute and it's time to escape. Open door. Uh, the red light, incur it's occupado. No, I did not. Uh, where's the uh, emergency exit? Is it, is it over here? No. Is it over here, maybe? Not close enough. No. Uh, where's the uh, emergency exit? Is, maybe it's over here. It's probably over by the wings somewhere, I imagine. Can't get there. Ah, there. Ah, there ah. Oh, okay. Apparently, it's right here. There's a large red handle preventing me opening the door. Okay, well, turn handle. A heavy padlock on the handle prevents you from doing so. What do I have in my inventory that would break a padlock? Ah, knife. Here we go. You try your best to jimmy the lock with a dull cheese knife, but for not. Hmm. Uh, look, padlock. Doesn't look interesting. I gotta go to the bathroom. Fuck. All right, back in the airport because I think I missed something. And what I missed has to do with this blue plate special, which I thought was pointless. All right, and the plate is there. She's blocking with her huge, gigantic, pumped up hairdo, but there, there it is. So look, plate. I don't know how to... Do it though, eat food. I could have sworn I said eat the food before, but then it's like, no, you really don't wanna. You son of a bitch. You quickly wolf down the blue paint special as if you had not eaten for an entire adventure game. Say, you tell the waitress, this is pretty good stuff. While it tastes just like the meatloaf mama laughed <laughs> You drop to the floor near the counter while making clever creative sounds with your trachea. Now you remember what it was you hated about Mama Laffer's cooking. She had a habit of losing bobby pins in the gravy. You frantically make the universal sign for choking. What a shame the waitress never heard of Dr. Heimlich. This game hates me. So the only way to know that there's a bobby pin in there is to die from it. All right, so I have no idea how you're supposed to see it without dying, but uh, let's get bobby, bobbly pin? No, bobbly pin, get the bobbly pin. This time, you decide to save yourself from a fate worse than, well, okay, actually quite similar to, no, no, indeed, I suppose it would be identical to death by fishing the bobby pin out of the blue pate special gravy-like substance instead of swallowing it. Okay, the game is really telling you in that sentence, like, yes, I know you died there, but this time, you know what to do, right? Ugh. Now, this part is really infuriating. We made it all the way back here. We've got the bobby pin, and of course, in every game, bobby pins are used to pick locks, so we're good. Now, in order to find the emergency exit, we know just by trial and error, it's over here. Um, but what would make so much more sense is if it had like an outline of the door like here on the outside. Yeah, like that. Wouldn't that make so much more sense? I mean, so much less infuriating. But of course, this is Leisure Suit Larry 2. This is 1988 Sierra. This game was made to be infuriating. Cleverly, you insert the bobby pin into the safety lock. Wouldn't you guess this is against some sort of federal regulation? The pin works. The door is unlocked. 
Good. Good. Now we can escape this plane forever and ever and ever. And maybe vent some of the smoke out and get some oxygen back in here. All right. Oh, right. Turn handle. With great difficulty, you push the red handle until you feel something tear crossing your legs. You shove... Crossing your legs? You shove the handle a quarter turn to the left until it's near the word danger. All right. Open door. For the final time, I hope. You give the door a firm shove. Yeah, there it is. Looks like, where's the outline? That's stupid. And a blast of the air seam tears out from its hinges. And you feel yourself being sucked out, unfortunately. Dang! Okay, okay. Uh, pull cord. No, not bored, you fool. There we go. The blessed parachute blossoms above you, jerking you around a lot. A feeling not wholly unfamiliar to you. There we go. We are safe from the KGB. And of course, I'm going to land directly into an alligator's mouth because that's how my life works. All right, that volcano looks really familiar. I'm not happy about this. Please don't land in the volcano, Larry. Steer, steer, come on. Come on, you played pilot wings before? Ow. Hey, look how happy he is to be suspended above in the tree line. <laughs> look, now you're really out on a limb. The ground is far below you, and you're stuck in a parachute you bought from a vending machine. Well, it worked, didn't it? Uh, swing! Do <laughs> dooby dooby do. <laughs> All right, now obviously I have a knife, but I wonder what happens if you just like stay here. Do you just like do you die eventually? Ow! Who's got patience for that? Cut. Rope. A good idea. There we go. With a dull butter knife, we can do it. You saw away at the parachute harness with a dull cheese knife, eventually turning it into a mere thread supporting your entire body weight. Suddenly, you look down and consider the consequences of falling to the jungle floor from this height. No choice, but you don't consider it for long. Oh, oh am I dead? No, I think I'm okay. Just knocked a little loopy. There we go. A oh, fall like that would be enough to break the average man's onklunk. Careful examination of yours reveals severe damage. The delicate instrument was smashed by the fall. You discard it here without learning of its dangerous cargo, nor realizing that you have inadvertently kept the world's most valuable secret from falling into enemy hands. I forgot what the secret even was. Okay, this looks different. What's on the ground here? Looks like a stick. Jungle forest shrouded in darkness and covered with a viscous substance that you presume passes for dirt around here. There is a stout stick lying under the tree. You feel fortunate you did not land on it. Well, it's mine now. Stick! You can never tell when a nice stout stick like this one will come in handy. I guess you could say that I could stick the land and it doesn't work. I would like to leave this screen, please. How do I do so? Uh, oh, oh, just, oh, whoops, you brushed a bush containing an arresting swarm of killer bees. You are frozen in fear. Could the rumors of the incredible strength really be true? Yep. Now, uh, perhaps you'll enjoy your new life as the queen bee's personal love slave. Nah, no way. Well, glad I saved either way. Let's not touch that tree. I guess I see like a little bit of yellow in it. Maybe that's supposed to be your uh, clue to look at it. Look, true. No, tree. No, tree. It's like a jungle in here. Could that be because you're stranded in the middle of a jungle on a tropical island? <gasps> the ground here is unusually spongy. Good for me. All right, so let's not touch the tree. Uh, maybe I can crawl under it. Is the game that smart? I can, but first move a little closer. Okay, got it. How about here? You carefully lower yourself to the slimy ground and attempt to make the way past the dangerous swarm of killer bees, which again, you can only know of if you died before. You successfully avoid the danger killer bees. I'm a slug. Kind of reminds me of Space Quest uh, 2, was it? Is that the one that took place in the jungle? Pretty sure it was. Now I'm in the dark forest of King's Quest 5. There's something up in this tree branch. I see it. Is that a snake? The jungle is dense and dark. High above you, monkeys dance through the treetops. That's not that treetop I'm worried about. Yes, a giant anaconda lies waiting for you, coiled above the branch, directly above the only exit from this part of the jungle. If I remember my video game lore and logic properly, first I should save. There we go. And just like when you're dealing with alligators and crocodiles, a stick is all you need. So you put the stick in the, in the mouth, and that's supposed to save you. So let's use stick 
on Snake. It's probably not going to work now, but I'm going to save it in my F3. There we go. Oh, oh, it said I'm not close enough, so I think that's the right way. Uh, that, there we go. You prayerfully prepare yourself for the oncoming jaws with a stick. Will it work? Oh, God. The snake dislocates its lower jaw in preparation for another hearty cholesterol-laden dinner of red meat and polyester. You carefully insert the stick into the distended opening. Hey, it works. Lovely, lovely. The snake, unable to remove its stick from the jaws in embarrassment, being humiliated before the other jungle creature slithers away through the undergrowth to its lair and early retirement. Oh, now it's red, and I've pretty much killed it because now it cannot eat ever, ever again. I know, I feel like kind of gypped that I didn't get to see the death. There we go, I feel better. Oh, <laughs> Worth it. There's probably going to be quicksand next. Yeah, there's always quicksand. Oh, look, the monkey's telling me where to go. Jungle floor is soft and sticky here. You finally recall your car's first seat covers. Okay, here's the trick. I know for a fact, because the monkey was walking on this light path here, so that's the safe path. So let's go the way of the safe path. No problem. Except for the fact that I love it to see Larry die. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, come on, camera. At least face the camera when you do it. There we go. We'd hate to see you die and not see the look on your face. There we go. So let's carefully walk the path with the mouse. The mouse is our friend. No balls. Balls. <laughs> Thank you, mouse. Beautiful. Ooh, I, re I remember this screen. Where am I? There I am. I'm literally saving every screen because everything in this jungle wants to kill me. A quiet brook babbles nearby. Vines hang from the jungle canopy, which thins as it reaches the beach just visible ahead. Well, let's grab a vine and everything it calls out, we want. Nope. Not close enough. All right, how about over here? No. How about this one? No. Up, up, up. Oh, dear. You feel a tickling sensation around your toes. Boy, this adventuring life sure is fun. I'm going to be dead from piranhas, aren't I? Yep. There they are. Oh, I can walk around. Oh, look, look, I can walk around like, oh, geek. Oh, he noticed. These piranha really work fast. For some reason, your heart is just not in the game anymore. Not to mention never several other organs. Hmm. Maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree. Literally, there's vines on this tree. So let's just swing over. I bet that'll work. Uh, swing vine. How about this one? Okay, there we go. Whoop. Oh, for God's sake. Hup. 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 I'm out. Why, Sierra? Why? Oh, thank God. I knew all along I was a swinger. Okay, fine. We're over here. Let's get a vine and go. You reach up, grasp the vine firmly, give it a sharp jerk, yanking it from the tree above you. You carefully coil up and insert it in your left front pent pocket. Oh, where are we? Hello. Hi there. Uh, look out. Oh, pff. look, Larry, I'm so used to some, uh, bad things happening that when something good actually happens, I'm like, oh, God, watch out. Out in the surf, that beautiful native girl is waving at you and <gasps> she's topless. So therefore, it's instant love. Gee, you think to yourself, I thought girls like that only existed in National Geographic. It's love at first sight. Also, second sight. Are you saying he's psychic? Uh, alright, strike a pose, Leilani. Oh wait, I don't know your name yet. That's Leilani. You think, is this the girl I've dreamed of? The one I've longed for? The moment I've waited for? Is this the love I've been looking for? Oh, oh look, they're both sure oh, they're in love instantly. Yes, fire your arrows into my respective asses. <laughs> All right, well, Dr. No Nookie back there is having some kind of celebration uh, for our love. That's nice of him. Well, Larry, are you just going to stand there? You finally met the girl of your dreams. Now's the time to take some action. Okay, well, okay, that works for me too. Leilani, she took all the initiative. You're limp. You've never been kissed like that before. Could it be? Is Leisure Suit Larry in love? Again? <laughs> I still can't do anything. You recover enough to speak. Oh my gosh! You're, you're, you're beautiful! You're, you're wonderful! Uh, do, do you understand English? What, what's your name? Uh, where are you from? Are you busy tonight? Of course I understand English, you silly. All of us here on Nantunite Island do. 
We live in a small village just off the beach. My name is Kalalao. What is yours? I thought it was Leilani for some reason. Who is Leilani? My name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Of course, it only stands to reason that such a lovely man would also have such a lovely name. Kalalao's smile beams, melting your heart. But as to your question concerning my availability tonight, I am afraid I have a disappointing information for you. As enjoyable as I feel sure an evening with someone like you must be, customs here on the island forbid premarital dating. No, none tonight, Island. All women save themselves for marriage. Well, that's okay. Uh, why don't we just get married instead? She smiles in agreement. Wouldn't that be wonderful? But unfortunately, our tribal elders have forbidden any new marriages until our island has been freed from its present scourge. Please, permit me to elucidate. Recently, an abhorrent man took our island from us. He claimed our sacred ancestral burial grounds at the top of a volcano and refuses to allow us to visit. She continues, For quite a while, I might add. Soon thereafter, our perpetually blue skies turned to fog. While none of us had ever seen snow or ice, suddenly a glacier appeared on the slopes of the volcano, preventing our passage to our sacred lands. A treacherous river then appeared, gouging a formidable canyon just behind our village. Then, most odious of all, he hypnotized our most beautiful women, enslaving them in his mountaintop fortress, forcing them to do his every whim, no matter how sick or repulsive. What a drag! Oh, yes, but now worst of all, because of all this, he prevented my people from completing a mega buck deal with a large multinational hotel conglomerate who are now prepared to turn this place into next year's trendiest tourist trap. We had it bagged. They were going to build a huge casino resort hotel complex right here on this lagoon, provide employment for our lazy men in the glowing field of slot machine repair, and even fund the daycare center. So, even though we women would continue to work our normal 16-hour days in the targo patches, we wouldn't have to carry out our children on our backs. But did that happen? Oh, hell no! And all because of that evil Don Nuki! She cries, suddenly turning quite sensitive. Oh, if some great hero would rid this island of its evilness, we could all live here happily ever after! You're no fool, Larry, that sounds like a cue! Say, I've got an idea! What if I stop this guy? Then we can get married! Uh, but of course! Oh, why didn't I think of that? This is every little girl's fairy tale! A hero comes in his white suit to save my island and its people! <sighs> Come on, Larry, let's go! Oh boy, that was long winded. Well, at least now Larry has some uh, motivation to move through the plot. Hello! Attention, please! cries Kalalo. Gather all the villages before the chief's hut. We must have a celebration! Wait here while I tell everyone! says the basket carrier. And off she goes. Hope that was nothing fragile or perishable in that basket. Oh, Larry, I do so hope you'll be able to convince my father, the chief, that we should be married, says Kalalo. Sometimes Daddy can have such a strange sense of humor. I don't like where this is going. Don't worry, baby, you reassure. For you, I would cross the burning sands of the Sahara. I would climb the highest peaks of the Himalayas. I would swim shark-infested waters of the ocean. Why, I'd even learn desktop publishing software. Funny you should mention that. Bye, hero. <laughs> Come on, let's go meet Daddy. All the villagers gathered for this profound occasion. You and your beloved stride across the compound to wait the arrival of the chief. Who I bet is going to have a really big bushy mustache. Oh, daddy -ish. Please come out. There's someone here I would like you to meet. Yeah, there he is. There's Kenny again. Father, this is Larry. Ha ha, Larry Laffer. We are in love and wish to marry. So you want to marry my daughter, says Chief Kenny Wawal, staring straight into the back of your skull. No one is worthy of her hand unless she can prove herself a real man. Himself, even. A help. Oh, so I'll do anything for the woman I love, sir. No sacrifice is too great. So be it. Enter the sacrificial hut and bring forth the sacred PC. Villages go ooh. Villages go ah. Well, we'll stick with ooh for now. I'll get on with the story in a second, but I'm really liking this beat. I promise I'll do something with this beat one day. Young man, sit before mighty PC. Prove your manhood by becoming its master, and you will pass part one of this initiation into our tribe. But wh what is I'm supposed to do? Write a short program. Any subject or topic, any length. Ah, no problem. Any good adventurer can do that. As long as it's 
in assembly language. He smiles, confident in the certainty of your failure. The villagers gasp. Villagers ooh. Villagers uh. Villagers uh. Villagers dance. Villagers ba. Villagers yeah 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 yeah. Call, call, calling out the villagers. This putz is going to write some assembly uh, code with the merry PC. Gonna marry Kyle in the merry and and the suit Larry. Yeah, that was that was almost something. With your heart in your throat as you approach their sacred relic, is at least significant bite first? You wonder. I'm the only one who can pass this test. Yes, power my PC, bike man. Uh, in a 21, move 20 here to CS. I'll make typing sound effects for you. All right, all ready for quality assurance. Hmm, what did you write? A complete multitasking, multi-user operating system that runs only on 8088 CPUs. Excellent. And you have a name for this product? Why, Unix, of course. Oh, can I get a, a rim shot, please, on that big drum of yours? Nope. Okay. Perfect, says Chief Kenny Wawa. I thought he wanted me to fail here. I'll tighten up your code later. Now, follow me and I'll lead you to the secret path, the way known only to card-carrying villagers, the path that will lead you to the sacred burial grounds of our ancestors, and one and only way to the top of Nuntunat Volcano. Rid this island of the Dr. No Nookie and Kalala will be your wife. Villages go, ah, oh, it's beautiful. This looks like some puzzles I have to solve. Looks like something's uh, kind of spelled out in there. Here we are, son, says Chief Kenny Wawa. This is the secret of my people, the way to our sacred volcano. Right across the chasm. Some secret? Any fool could see that. Of course, any fool could see that. What's important is you must cross this chasm, climb the recent icy glacier, walk the treacherous paths, and penetrate the impenetrable fortress of the evil Dr. No Nookie. <coughs> All right, catch you later. I must go lead the afternoon village aerobics class. Carthage must be destroyed. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot about that. All right. Well, that seems like a pretty good place to leave off for now. So I think this is end game. Here we are at the cusp, the very entryway to Dr. No Nookie's Fortress Volcano, which we have seen twice before inside for a quick second before we are scissored in half by a laser. So I think next part we can actually wrap up the entire game. So it might be a little bit longer than before because I cannot remember how long it takes to get inside and penetrate Dr. No Nookie's stronghold or the epilogue because this story, this game seems to be kind of story heavy when it really wants to be. But we'll come to that next time. So for now, as always, good night, jelly beans. Good night. That's me waving.